Hi, and welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we may have a really long video, which is to look at this really, really cool problem. And what is this problem? So suppose that we have this language L, which is a subset of zero star. And the zero can be anything, but as long as there's only one character, then that's the language that we're talking, or a language we're talking about. And it's called a unary language. By unary, this means that there's only one character in the alphabet. So as an example, we could have L to be zero and then zero, zero, and then maybe five zeros or something. So this language only has strings with only zeros in them. That's what unary means. If we had like a zero one or something, that would not be a unary language. Okay, so here, we have L to be any unary language. So it could either be regular or not. We don't really care. What we're tasked to do here is to show that L star is always regular. So let's actually even think about that. So suppose that L is, for example, zero to the P where P is prime. One could actually show, and we probably will do this in a future video, that L is not regular, but this result says that L star is regular by, by this, obviously. So it's actually quite amazing. You can actually find undecidable unary languages like this, um, and the star of them is always regular according to this. So this is actually a pretty amazing result. And it really tells us that the star operator is not preserving for non-regular languages, non-context-free languages, undecidable languages, etc. Every single one of them, any language of any class, when you apply star to it, if it's unary, will always give us a regular language. So you may be thinking, okay, what's a, un what's a regular language? The regular language just corresponds to a DFA, which is just a state-based machine. Okay, it's not really important what this is. So one thing that we should start off is if L is finite, so the language L is either finite or it's infinite. One of those two occurs. So if it's finite, that implies that L is regular already because every finite language is regular. And because regular languages are closed under star, this implies that L star is regular also. Okay, so what we need to figure out is what about uh, when L itself is infinite. Because if it's infinite, it could be regular or it might not be regular. If it's finite, then it's always regular and we get this immediately. But what about when it's infinite? So there are several possibilities that could occur. And we won't actually worry about whether L itself is finite because it will actually, we'll actually show that we could uh, ignore a lot of the cases if this is occur, if that, if that is the case. So what could possibly happen? Well, suppose that we had, just as an example, we have the language which is all even lengths. So epsilon zero, zero, four zeros, six zeros, etc. Well then, if we look at L star, well, if I take any string in here and concatenate it with any string in here, then I'm still gonna get an even length string. And if I, because I have the epsilon, I'm still gonna get all the original strings also. So in fact, this language is equal to L in this particular case, even though it doesn't have every single string. It doesn't have strings of length one, for example. But suppose we had something like this. Suppose that L has some strings, and let's say it has uh, three zeros and five zeros, and then maybe some other strings. Well, L star must have all of the original strings because I must uh, be able to pick them one at a time, either once or more, or even zero times. But uh, we're not gonna worry about zero. Let's just think about the one case. 
Well, the three zeros and the five zeros are always going to be there. But if I, if I concatenate the three zeros with itself, then I'm going to get six zeros. So six zeros. Then if I get the three with the five here, then I'm going to get eight zeros. Uh, yeah, eight zeros. If I did the, the five with itself, I would get 10. But if I instead did the three with the six, then I would get nine zeros, which I'll write zero to the nine. If I did three, uh, sorry, five with itself, I would get 10. Let's see, can I get 11? I can, I can get the six with the five, zero to the 11. And now I claim that I will get zero to the n, where n is at least 12 after that. And why is that? Well, we can get zero to the nine. Well, then I can just append the three zeros onto this to get zero to the 12. Append three zeros onto this to get zero to the 13, and then this one to get 14. So then for um, after that point, I'm going to get the three sets uh, um, of runs of zeros. And these are all consecutive. So that means that I can get any number of zeros at least 12. And if we notice that, well, from nine zeros and up, we will always get all those strings. So the only possible strings that we could miss are of eight zeros or less. So that means that the strings that we get are every single string minus all the ones of length at most eight. Okay? So, and that's only a finite number of strings missed. So in this particular case, L star is equal to zero star minus a finite language. Okay? And since finite languages are regular, and zero star is regular, set minus is closed for regular languages, so then L star is regular. And we can see that here. Okay, so how would we approach this in general? Well, let's suppose that we were in a situation like this one. Well, then this means that if we look at the lengths of the strings themselves, we will want to know whether two strings are relatively prime. So we say that two numbers m and n are, are relatively prime if the greatest, the biggest thing that divides both of them is one. So for example, the five and the three example that we had before, so the GCD of five and three, well, what's the biggest thing that divides both of these? Well, they're both prime. They just happen to be prime. So the biggest thing that divides them is one. But if we instead picked, let's say, six and four, well, one divides both of these, but two also does. Four doesn't divide six, so then the greatest common divisor among these is two. Okay, so what we can do is we can extend the GCD for the lengths of, the, of every single string in the entire language. So let's let M be the GCD of all lengths of strings in the original language L, whatever that may be. So I don't know necessarily what this is here, but what we can think about is to try to combine two different strings. So let's say that we have a zero to the X and zero to the Y. So this one, of course, has length x, this one has of length y. Then I claim that in L star, if we, if we have these two strings right here, we can get any string 0 to the n, where n is at least x minus 1, y minus 1, plus 1. The number isn't really that important, oh, actually minus one, excuse me. Let's just make sure I got that right, yep. So the number itself isn't really that important. The important thing is that 
these two numbers are finite, so this n right here is finite. So this means that um, if we have these two strings right here, then we can get any string of length n at least some finite number. So then this implies that L star will be equal to uh, 0 star minus uh, language f, where f contains um, only strings of length less than or equal to n. Okay? So that's pretty nice. So let's actually think about this. So what we can do is we can notice that because that zero star is finite, uh, I mean, I mean it's regular, f is finite because this number itself is finite. So that means the language itself here of the strings that are missed are is only finite because they're the longest length that any string could be in there is finite. So let's see. Well, if the if it is the case that the GCD is one, so if M is 1, then that means that there are two strings in the language that are relatively prime to each other. So there, oops, there exist uh, X and Y such that the GCD of X and Y is 1. Because if this wasn't the case, then that means that the greatest common divisor is not 1, it's some higher number. Well then, so then we can repeat the above argument. So we can use the above argument. Because um, the argument above relies on the fact that two strings have relatively prime uh, length. So x and y are relatively prime here. But what if it's not the case that there are two numbers that are relatively prime? which is corresponding to the case where m is strictly bigger than 1. So the greatest common divisor is strictly bigger than 1. So as an example, let's look at the language where we have all even lengths. If I cross out the empty string right here, and I can do, I can do that, the resulting language is still regular, um, because it's just even lengths at least 2. Well, the greatest common divisor among all of these is 2. So what can we do if that's the case here? What we can do is to form a particular language. So let's form this language right here, which is going to be L to the pow power 1 over M. And what is this language? It's all of the strings W such that W to the M is in L. Because this means that Every single num every single string has length that is a multiple of m because if it wasn't, then there would be two strings that are relatively prime in length to each other. So every single string in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead of have it having it be some number m, a multiple of m, I'm just going to reduce the lengths by dividing by m because every string in the language has length that is divisible by m. So for the language above here, all the strings have length that is a multiple of 2, so what I would do is I would just reduce the strings by d cutting them in half, essentially. So then I would have the um, string 1, two, uh, 2 zeros, 3 zeros, etc. And what we can do is to check if there are any that are um, there's a GCD of. So then what we can do is to repeat the above procedure with L to the power of 1 over M. And if there is still happens to be a GCD in here, then I'm just going to repeat this. At some point, we're going to have a GCD of 1, then we're going to find two strings that are relatively prime to each other, and then we can apply this argument as before. Okay, So this is not an easy proof, but it's pretty amazing in what its implications are in that the star operator really destroys whatever properties the original language had. So if the language had was completely undecidable, the star of it is regular, and we really exploited the fact that the language is unary because 
all that we can really talk about now is just the length of the strings. If there were different characters, then a string being the same length as another one, it may not be the same string. So it's actually pretty amazing um, what we can say just because the language uh, happens to be unary here. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment below if you were able to find it out a different way. If you want to support the channel, please subscribe and like to the video. It costs nothing and it really helps support the channel. If you want to contribute further, we have a Patreon link, link in the video description. And we have a Discord server and many other links down below that you can check out also. So I hope that was interesting. I'll see you next time.